Hi, Jacob Kalusner here and after a longer than expected break, welcome to Instant Threat Modeling episode number Lucky 13 and today's topic is CICD tools. Before the users can reach your application, it must go through certain steps. Once it was decided in the project management and collaboration tools, time to code it. So we need code repositories, GitLab, Bitbucket, hosted on-prem or in cloud, think GitLab CI. Continuous integration requires automation servers, such as Jenkins, Bamboo, Travis or TeamCity that integrate the rest of the following. Build servers will have installed Maven, Rake or Gradle. Testing requires testing execution environment and also storage of test scenarios. Selenium, QUnit, JUnit, PyTest here, but also security tests such as SonarCube, Fortify. Now comes deployment. I've seen Octopus, Excel deploy and Elastic Box. Actually, before deploying, you need provisioning of access and infrastructure. Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Terraform. Artifact management software allows to take care of libraries and dependencies. Nexus, JFrog, Nugget, Black Duck and Snick. Cloud, IaaS or PaaS with many servers, you'll need more services to manage and orchestrate. Amazon Workspaces, OpenShift or Kubernetes goes here. And monitoring software, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Zabbix. With so many tools, what can go wrong? Let's start with excessive services exposed to the internet. During penetration tests, I've personally found a lot of GitLab's, Jenkins's and Bitbuckets exposed to the internet with default or easy to predict passwords. Once the attacker has some working credentials, they can look for more. Secrets stored in code such as database credentials or service accounts will allow to extend the attack surface or even allow a quick lateral movement. Unauthorized modification of code or test suites. It is very common that the application allows to push, merge or even delete repositories. Secrets stored in the configuration. In order for Jenkins to pull the code from GitHub, it needs to have the git ssh key configured somewhere and it is possible to retrieve those. I remember one Jenkins containing an AWS key that happened to grant administrative access in the whole infrastructure. Remote code execution by design allowed for low privileged users. Custom interfaces such as Jenkins or Apache Foundry allow to write custom Groovy scripts and those allow to execute arbitrary commands on the server. By the way, I found a similar RCE by design in Apache Zeppelin, a big data solution interface, exploitable via a cross-site request forgery or a low privileged big data analyst account. In order for SaaS tools to scan for vulnerabilities in the code, they need to have access to the code repositories. I've seen a relatively secure environment that recently introduced a SaaS tool in their infrastructure and this allowed unauthorized users to download the code. In certain setups, provisioning and management scripts can expose sensitive credentials. The darkest place is under the candle. Imagine a software composition analysis tool such as Nexus to be configured to allow only trusted third-party libraries. And then imagine adding Maven Central to that list of trusted libraries. If I can push artifacts to Maven Central, evil actors can do it too. There is a recent example of a bug bounty hunter that created malicious NPM libraries and named them exactly as the ones used by Microsoft custom Microsoft libraries and Microsoft when pulling the code they were actually using the malicious ones in the very first place. Once we scanned the external attack surface of one company and found OpenShift, a management software with a default password. The boxes themselves had all security settings, long passwords, no external network interface, but we could manage them remotely from the internet turn them off, execute arbitrary code, or even establish a reverse shell directly in the OpenShift console. Sometimes logging and monitoring tools expose too much information. One website I tested had some logging tool that actually copied all logs into a raw TCP port exposed to the internet. All you needed to do is connect with Netcat and watch plain text database queries and passwords. 
Instant mitigations. Minimize the external attack surface. No, your bit packet does not need to be on the internet. You can ask all your developers to use VPN service, they know how to do it. And as a minimum, you can make 2FA obligatory with no opt-out. Avoid secrets hard-coded directly in the code. They can be stored in secure variables in the deployment tools and you can set up automatic scripts to look for potential leakage. Introduce a proper role matrix and a secure code review process. Make sure that none of the low privileged users have access to administrative functions and configuration screens. Least privileged principle, no default passwords and password managers. Go through all of your interfaces and define what they are intended for and what they are capable of. Least privileged principle again. Put special attention to configuration of security software. Least privileged principle one more time. Follow best hardening practices for configuration of software that handles critical credentials. These tools very often have secure vaults. Software composition analysis tools are very powerful, but they can also introduce a lot of blockers to your CI CD pipeline. Help the developers to write software that is secure by default, but also don't make their work a nightmare by asking for permission each time they use a library. No default passwords, obligatory 2FA for critical software. Scan your attack surface regularly and define an access model for your logging and monitoring tools. This was instant threat modeling of CI/CD tools. If you want to verify the security of your environment, please click the message button. Otherwise, just follow these. All previous episodes at securing.b/itm. Cheers.